Hi, my name is Tomasz and at Edelweiss Connect I'm working on data management and data modeling activities. In this presentation I would like to show you a few examples of interactive data visualizations so that you can see what is possible to achieve uh, with the, once you have a good data management system behind. So the goal here was to show was to simplify data access and analysis. And we want to show with these examples how easy it can be to access relevant data and simply make uh, different kinds of visualizations to gain insights from the data and also how to easily share such tools with others. So I prepared three examples uh, coming from different contexts. The first one is about cytotoxicity. It's coming from JRC. The second one is about development um, toxicities and is coming from University of Heidelberg. And the third one is about the analysis of results coming from the TempoSeq assays. So I would now start directly with these examples and then um, after showing them, uh, we would look what are the um, highlights and also a bit about the um, processes behind. So I'll now switch to a browser because each of these examples is a notebook that runs in a browser. Okay. <clears throat> Um, now that I just mentioned that each notebook runs in a browser, it means that you can easily share such notebooks um, just by sending this URL to anyone and they can also, um, if they have access, they can also see the same notebook as you and they can also make um, their own graphs and try to gain insights from your data. <clears throat> So these uh, notebooks are, uh, we find, quite convenient because they allow you to, for example, first put some uh, introduction, some context um, also for non-experts so that they get some introduction about the data and about the essay. So here, uh, this is the um, JRC data visualization notebook and we cover two essays that they were running, uh, cell viability and cytotoxicity. And <clears throat> first we provide some um, short uh, information about these essays. And then um, the user, actual user interface starts. So there were three uh, different experiments done and uh, each was um, analyzed with both of these essays so in total there were six data sets or six um, experiments so user can um, now select uh, one of these um, experiments and um, next in the next stage you you can also select a compound from a list of compounds that were tested in that experiment and immediately uh, when you select a compound, you get uh, the structure of that compound displayed here so that you, get, you have some idea about the structure of that compound. And um, so based on this selection, based on the experiment and compound selection, the notebook um, accesses data in the database. So uh, data from these essays, they were uh, published on Edelweiss data within the UTOX risk project. And now this data is accessible uh, as a, uh, from different applications and this notebook is just one example of such an application. So based on these selections, we can access only a portion of data. So coming from this experiment and from this compound and we get um, measurements for that uh, conditions. In this case, 
we we get um, each compound was tested at different concentrations and for different um, time exposures, and then cell uh, viability was uh, was measured. And that's why we can represent this data as a heat map, where um, each row represents a single concentration, and uh, from left to right, the time point increases. So the first heat map is actually the average of the three replicates that were done in that experiment. And below we have three heat maps, each is a um, uh, single replicate. So such heat maps can also be represented as a line chart, so where we have um, a set toxicity versus concentration profile and uh, different lines correspond to different time points. And with uh, selection of these time points, we can have this um, immediately, we get updated graphs and we can uh, look only the, <clears throat> that the interesting, uh, the conditions that are interesting for us. So, with this, uh, we see that this uh, cytotoxicity versus concentration has this typical um, sigmoidal uh, response that can be fitted with um, Hill function. And from this one, uh, this expression, we can extract IC50 values. This was already done uh, offline, so raw data was processed and then published uh, also process and summary data. So we can extract directly summary data for this compound, for this experiment that we selected above. And what we can see here are uh, maybe um, more high level effects. So we see how IC50 changes with the exposure time. And um, here what is assumed is that IC50 is uh, inversely proportional to the exposure time to exponent n, and this n is termed chronicity index. Um, so this is one um, relatively simple example um, that shows already the power of having a good um, database uh, that can serve you data as a web request uh, through web uh, service. Another example is coming from the University of Heidelberg, where uh, developmental toxicity assays were um, performed. Uh, here again, uh, the notebook begins with the introduction and description of the method, also with some images from this essay and uh, schematic uh, representation uh, schema about this uh, essay. And then uh, we get um, metadata information also coming directly from the database. So if it changes there, it will also be updated here. And uh, after that, we get um, to the user interface. So user can now select a single compound. Um, Again, you get the structure of the compound updated directly from the smiles. And um, below is the actual data. So here in this essay, we, there were two endpoints that were measured. So endpoint one corresponds to lethal effects and endpoint two to sublethal effects. And here we have first line charts or heat map representation of the first endpoint. Again, as in the JRC case, we have um, we can look at the concentration versus time profile, or uh, here as a heat map or as a line chart where we have endpoint versus concentration, and each line corresponds to a single exposure time. Also, yeah, this data was also. Um, so here, uh, what we see here is a uh, visualization of raw data, but what we are interested in the end are uh, benchmark concentrations, for example, and all this raw data was 
processed and also the processed and summary data sets were published to the Edelweiss data database and is accessible uh, again from this web service. So all these benchmark concentrations are again updated uh, immediately when we change our selection of compound here. And the same is repeated for the second endpoint. And here we also have, uh, similarly as in the previous case, IC50 versus exposure time dependence. And um, below that, we have this um, supplementary code section where all the code that was needed to to extract the data and to prepare it for visualization. Uh, the third example is, is um, the notebook that is dedicated for visualization of results coming from the Tempo 6 studies. Uh, so this is a genotoxic um, Essay. Um, in this essay, there are um, gene expression profiles that are measured. Um, <clears throat> first, um, so in within the EU Tox Risk Project, this essay were run in uh, four case studies. So user can first select one or multiple case studies, then they can pick one or multiple tempo six studies. And the list of compounds is again updated based on the selected case studies. So only the compounds that were tested in that case study are shown. And yeah, just by clicking, uh, checking, you can select compounds that you are interested in and immediately you can see their structures. And um, yeah, after that, the you, you user can select, um, should set um, threshold values. So, as I said, in this essay, um, gene expression profiles are measured. So we have uh, thousands of genes measured in uh, for each uh, at each condition, and we are always interested only in differentially expressed genes. So user can here select, for example, a log fall change threshold and also the adjusted p-value or um, p-value thresholds so that only differentially expressed um, genes are shown uh, below. And what we see here is a heat map for each of the compounds. We get a heat map where we see how uh, gene expression is um, varies with the concentration of compounds. So each row is a single gene, and from the left to the right, the concentration of compound increases. And color represents the log fault change. Then for uh, a subset of these genes, you can also draw uh, line plot so we can select maybe four genes that we are most interested in and here we get uh, we get uh, line charts for the three compounds and for each of these the gene expression um the full changes for these four genes are displayed okay uh up to this stage um Things are in principle the same as in previous notebooks. So we access data from the database based on the selections that the user made. We access only the interesting portion of that of data and we visualize it either as a heat map, either as a line chart. But here we also make use of another web service, which is Enricher. And this web service um, returns us uh, pathways in which the selected genes are involved. So here I selected four genes and 
immediately after I make this selection, a uh, request is sent to this enricher web service and we are uh, returned a list of pathways ranked by their uh, relevance in which these uh, genes are uh, appearing. So, for example, I can see here that the first pathway is uh, called focal adhesion and two of the four genes that I selected are involved in it. So this notebook uh, demonstrates um, the added value that can be generated by um, yeah, having good um, by having basically data available as a web service so that it is accessible in such a notebook and you can then also um, call other web services like in this case enricher to get even more uh, information <clears throat> So these were the three examples that I wanted to show you. And um, now I can return back to the uh, PowerPoint presentation. So <clears throat> what I would like to highlight with these three examples is the following. So they give you, uh, I think, very intuitive user interface so that you can make uh, you can simply select a portion of data that you're interested in and you can immediately see what are the some basic plots. And these um, tools, so these visualizations are also easily shareable with others. So as I said, just copy and pasting URL because these notebooks run in the browser. And we aim to use these tools more in a risk hunter project to within so within the <clears throat> case studies to to gain insights. And we also see a lot of potential for external use of such tools, so for um, dissemination activities, but also could be used as a supplementary material in publications. So. If uh, anyone would be interested, we could also support um, preparation of such notebooks. So to make, um, to add uh, such notebooks to publications, which I think would bring some added value to, to the publication so that readers could also play with, um, with the data themselves and they could um, extract relevant graphs for, for them. So instead of um, putting hundreds of graphs in the in the supplementary material, you could maybe put a link to such a notebook and um, anyone could then also see um, what they're interested in. So all these examples are supported by Edelweiss Data Service. And now just a few words about um, what happens behind the scenes. So <clears throat> the core is actually a good um, data structure. So in the EUTOX risk project and also in Risk Hunter, we agreed on the format of data sets. So each data set that is published has to have a certain structure and we provide their uh, metadata uh, and uh, data for each um, data set. So each data set contains some fields that are required and then you can also add as many custom fields as you want. Um, in the next stage, we import these um, data sets. So each data set is uh, validated before it is uploaded to BioStudies. So this is uh, kind of a quality assurance that um, what is uploaded um, conforms to the uh, grid standard standards. And after being published on BioStudies, datasets are then also automatically imported to Edelweiss data. 
Why is this important? It's because after it is uploaded to Airways data, the data set becomes easily accessible as a web service. It means you can access your data, for example, from these notebooks that I showed you that run in the browser. You can also access um, data from, I don't know, Python, R, Jupyter Notebooks, so from different data analysis tools that you may use. Um, basically, it's independent of the platform. <clears throat> so with that, I would like to finish this presentation. I hope you got some insights um, why good data management system is important and what it enables. Thank you very much.